Let's look at notes for chapter 5.1 on natural logs. Um, first off, uh, let's see if we can talk about some properties of our graph y equals natural log of x. So natural log of x has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, and the graph is going to increase to the right of that vertical asymptote. Uh, the domain for our natural log graph is from 0 to infinity, and the range is all real numbers. Um, a couple of graph characteristics is that this graph is always continuous within this domain. Uh, that means there's no breaks in the graph um, uh, once uh, in the middle of the graph, I mean. Uh, always increasing, the graph is always uh, has a positive slope and always concave down. This graph is always going to have a second derivative that is less than zero. Okay. Uh, a couple of traits uh, that will be useful to know. Uh, this allows us to kind of have an idea as to where um, or evaluating certain um, values for natural log of x without having to resort to the calculator. Uh, first off, uh, the natural log function uh, has a vertical asymptote at 0. We talked about that at x equals 0. Uh, it crosses the x-axis at uh, 1. And it passes through the ordered pair e1. So e is a rational number, which is um, uh, roughly around 2.718. Um, and just based off of this graph, uh, we can um, have a good idea as to some of the values that sits um, uh, on this graph. For instance, natural log of 2. Right? We know natural log of 2, uh, have this, this x value of 2 means that it has to sit on the graph somewhere um, between 1 and e. And if we were to try and give a guess as to what that y value is, we can simply um, look at this graph and determine that the y value at natural log of 2 must be somewhere between 0 and 1. Right? It's a positive value um, that is less than 1. Um, natural log of 0. 0.5, for instance. Natural log of 0. 0.5, we know 0. 0.5 um, uh, sits somewhere uh, for, on, um, for our natural log graph. Our 0.5 is going to be somewhere here below the x-axis. So we know that natural log of 0.5, even though we may not know that that, um, um, uh, that exact value, we do know ballpark value has to be in the negatives, right? It has to be less than 0. Uh, next is natural log of 3. So natural log of 3, we know natural log of e is 1. Natural log of anything greater than e would be values greater than 1. So um, may probably be 1.3, 1.4, maybe less than that, but greater than 1 for, um, uh, for sure. All right. All right, uh, example 1, uh, sketch the graph of natural log of x minus 3 and state its domain. Um, x minus 3 means that there's a vertical asymptote at 3, whatever makes that 0, and all the x values um, uh, that will make this positive are going to be values greater than 3. So domain is from 3 to infinity. Okay, example 2, we have a natural log of x, and we're asked to find um, uh, uh, these uh, values involving limits. So limit as, in, as uh, n, uh, x approaches 0 from the right side of 0 for this graph, natural log of x. If we follow the graph towards 0 from the right side of 0, we see the y value is approaching negative infinity. Limit as x approaches 0 from the left side of 0, we see that the graph does not exist to the left side of 0, so therefore does not exist. Limit as x approaches 0, as it approaches 0, in order for a limit to, exi um, to exist as x approaches a, a value, it has to approach the same y value from both sides of the graph. So we see there's nothing on the, right, on the left side, even though the right side does approach negative infinity, um, but um, we have to say the limit does not exist. Okay, for d, limit as x approaches positive infinity. So if we follow the graph to the right, we see the uh, y value keeps increasing. So limit does not exist, but we can be more specific and say uh, does not exist because uh, limit is approaching infinity. All right, a couple of uh, properties of logs. Uh, natural log of 1 is 0. And uh, we can also refer back to the graph for that, right? Natural log of 1 is 0. Order pair of 1, 0 exists on natural log. 
um, natural log of AB. This is product property, so anytime um, I am uh, I have uh, two terms that's multiplied that's inside natural log function. I can expand that uh, using power uh, product property ln of a plus ln of b. ln of uh, a to the nth power. Uh, this is one of the nicest properties for logs. This, uh, this allows us to, with logs, we're allowed to uh, bring that exponent down in front, which makes um, um, solving uh, for problems um, a lot more convenient, a lot easier. Okay, next is uh, quotient property, which is expanding uh, this into something a little bit um, uh, more friendly, a little bit easier to use. So natural log of A over B, we can rewrite this as uh, natural log of A minus natural log of B. And then finally, another, another value, natural log of E is equal to 1. You can look at uh, the graph to confirm that. Natural log of E is 1. Also, this highlights uh, the relationship between E to the X and ln of X. They are inverses of each other, so a composite function will... Um, uh, cancel out to be just one there. Okay. Example three: expand natural log of three e squared. So if we if we expand, um, we can use in this case we can use product property. So ln of three plus ln of e squared. Um, can, uh, next step: uh, we can't do anything more with ln of three, but this ln of e squared, we can bring this exponent down in front to ln of e. And then 2 ln of e becomes 2 times 1. 2 times 1 is 2 plus ln of 3. These are not like terms. We have to leave it as ln of 3 plus 2.